Charging is such a key strategic piece for China's smartphone brands to gain dominance. Huawei, Xiaomi, and Oppo now have some of the fastest charging technologies out there. In this episode, we look at how top smartphone brands in China now have a clear leadership position in providing the fastest charging performance using proprietary technologies rather than international standards. In the last few episodes, we looked at charging technologies from Xiaomi, Oppo, and Huawei. In this episode, we'll put it all together and see how they compare versus one another. We'll also see how these China-based charging technologies have diverged quite a bit from what we see from Google, Samsung, and Apple. Let's first compare the fastest charging technologies used by Huawei, Oppo, and Xiaomi. We'll start with USB-based charging technologies. Here we see four different phones charging at room temperature. On the top right, we have the Oppo Ace 2 using its SuperVoke 2.0 65-watt charger. On the top left, we have the Huawei Mate 40 Pro with its SCP 66-watt charger. And on the bottom left, we have the Mi 10 Ultra with its QC5 120-watt charger. And on the bottom right, we have the Mi 9 Pro 5G, which was the previous generation from the Mi 10, and we have the Mi 9 Pro 5G charging with its QC4 Plus 45 watt charger. So you can see with the Mi 10 Ultra, it's definitely charging the fastest here. A lot of the initial charging is done at a very high level, but you can see a lot of the sustained charging is closer to about a 30 watt followed by a 23 watt USB level and because of that it's achieving full 100% battery in about 45 minutes. With the Mate 40 Pro it's a little bit slower in that it achieves full battery closer to about 55 minutes uh, but it achieves that through sustained USB charging levels at about 30 seven watts followed by 27 watts and that really allows for rapid charging especially in the initial phases with the oppo ace 2 it achieves full battery after about 65 minutes and a lot of the usb power seen on an aggregate basis is closer to about 17 18 watts level even though there's a brief burst of fast charge initially We'll do a similar analysis on the wireless charging side. Again, we'll charge the same four phones at room temperature. Note all these wireless chargers actually have a built-in fan, so that allows excess heat to be removed so that very high levels of charging performance can be maintained even at room temperature. So for the Oppo Ace 2, we use its AirVoke 40 watt technology. For the Mate 40 Pro, we use its wireless SCP 50 watt technology. And with the Mi 10 Ultra, we use the Mi wireless charging stand at 55 watts. And then we use the 30 watt version of the Mi stand with the Mi 9 Pro 5G. Overall, we see similar levels of performance. A lot of the battery charging level for the Mate 40 Pro and the Mi 10 Ultra is at a 20 watt level. So that results in the Mi 10 Ultra reaching 100% battery first under 60 minutes, followed by the Mate 40 Pro a little after 60 minutes. The Oppo Ace 2 achieves full battery after 70 plus minutes, followed by the Mi 9 Pro 5G. All these have very impressive levels of charging performance at room temperature, and this rivals what we see on the USB side. So how does this charging performance from Huawei, Oppo, and Xiaomi compare to that of Apple, Google, and Samsung? In this chart, we can see how long it takes for these different phones to charge from zero to 100%. 
For example, the Mi 10 Ultra and the Mate 40 Pro both charge to 1% in under an hour. We can also compare that to the average battery charging power levels it takes to get to 100%. And with the Mi 10 Ultra, that average is close to about a 22 watt level. And with the Mate 40 Pro, that's close to about 18 watts. It's very interesting to see that with the China-based brands, we see the fastest charging performance, meaning the lowest numbers of charging hours, as well as the highest average battery charging power. The Mi 10 Ultra, the Mate 40 Pro, the Ace 2, the Mi 9 Pro 5G, as well as the Reno 4 Pro 5G all show the best performance in terms of the charging speed as well as the highest battery charging power. Other phones from different brands like Samsung and Apple and Google show a much more conservative approach towards charging and take a lot longer to charge with their fastest charging USB based technologies. Let's now take a closer look at the growing divergence in charging technology adoption and policies by these China based brands. With this chart, we can conveniently compare how these different charging technologies work with the ACE2 phone. For example, with the AirVoc Max 40 watt wireless charger, it takes a little over 10 minutes to charge to 20% and about a minute and five, a minute and 10 minutes to charge to 100%. We can also see the average charging power used to get to these percentage levels. For example, with the AirVoc Max 40 watt charger at 20%, it takes about an average of 17 watts of battery charging power to get there. And to get to 100% battery charging, it takes an average of about 13 watts to, of battery charging power to get there. We also show the max battery charging power observed, which is typically seen at the initial stage of charging with the AirVoc Max 40 watts. That max battery charging power is about 28 watts. So with this type of framework, we can clearly see that the AirVoc and the SuperVoc charging technologies from Opal have a clear advantage in terms of charging speed versus more international-based standards like USB power delivery and non-active USB-C 15-watt chargers. The AirVoc and SuperVoc charging technologies from Opal have a higher battery charging power level as well as lower charging hours, which means a faster charging time. And that's a deliberate choice by Opal to maintain a superior advantage with its own charging technologies. You can see here that Huawei does something very similar with its own charging technologies. For the Mate 40 Pro, it charges the fastest with its own SCP Wireless Max 50 watt wireless charger, as well as its USB based SCP Max 66 watt charger. These have much faster charging times than more standard USB power delivery chargers, as well as standard Qi based chargers. Even with Xiaomi and its Mi 10 Ultra, you can see there's also a clear preference for either USB quick charge based technologies or its own wireless charging stand. Let's now look at the impact of this faster charging performance with how much power these phones consume. This chart shows how long it takes to fully discharge these phones under a high power consumption type of setting. High power consumption involves either maxing out the display brightness or using your video camera or other activities which can really increase the power consumption. You can see that overall for these different phones under a high power consumption type setting, the phone fully discharges roughly between five to a nine hour period. Well, what's very interesting, you can see that with a lot of these phones that we had seen that charge the fastest, they also have the highest levels of battery discharging power. 
and that reduces the amount of useful life that they can get with the battery. So it seems that with the faster charging performance of these phones, these phones can also get away with much faster discharge of power under a max setting environment as well. This chart allows us to conveniently compare the charging versus the discharging behavior of different phones. For example, with the Mate 40 Pro, you can use the phone anywhere between four to 12 hours if the phone is having a very bright display or using the camera a lot. That usually means the phone is consuming a lot of power. You'll probably get more like about a four or five hour amount of use. If you're just using the phone more casually, you're using less power. And as a result, you can use the phone for more like 10 to 12 hours. If you're using Huawei's own SCP technology, you can fully charge your phone under an hour. So this is a very healthy ratio of one hour of charging versus worst case four or five hours of discharging. And if you were to use more standard based technologies like USB power delivery or RT, you can see you're dealing with much longer charging times so that ratio of charging versus discharging isn't as favorable. So clearly Huawei has a strong preference for using its own charging technologies to achieve a good user experience, especially if you're a very heavy phone user and using high amounts of power. We hope you got quite a lot of information about how all these different phones charged. It was quite interesting to compare the differences between iPhones, Galaxy phones, phones from China, etc. Next, we'll shift gears to look more towards notebook computers, especially high performance ones, and expand our analysis beyond just the power side to also USB data and video. To stay up to date on our latest testing analysis, be sure to subscribe here. Also, you can go to www.gtrusted.com to see all our in-depth analysis and benchmarking data. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in a future episode.